I would say let's uh, dive straight into it. Maybe a little bit of background uh, about us, about Green Mentry, who we actually are. So we're a startup based in Freiburg. We were founded about five years ago by David Fischer, Sven Killinger, and Kai Mainzer after they finished their PhDs working on energy system planning. And they had the goal of digitizing energy system planning and providing stakeholders and decision makers in the energy sector with, with digital tools to basically make more neutral and database decisions. So five years, quite a lot has passed. We've grown quite a bit. We're now 55 employees working in uh, energy infrastructure planning. So on one hand, we provide software as a ser uh, service solutions, so digital twins, for example, of cities. On the other hand, energy consulting services, especially heat grid planning or heat planning, grid planning, but also renewable energy uh, potential analysis. Um, we're based in Freiburg, but we also have a small uh, office now in Aachen. Yeah, a little bit of references. So we worked in over 150 municipalities now when it comes to heat planning and over 2,000 when it comes to grid planning together with partners of ours, energy utilities, grid operators, and so on. That's enough about who we are. Let's uh, dig a bit into what we actually do. So our mission is to drive forward the energy transition with digital solutions. We work together with basically three different groups of stakeholders. So these are on one end cities that want to create zero emission cities and municipalities, energy utilities and grid operators that want to have a future proof uh, energy system in the future, and also energy planners, engineering offices that plan renewable energy systems. And there's a lot of different approaches to reach these zero emission cities. So on one hand, we can use heat pumps, district heating networks, charging infrastructure, PV battery systems, hydrogen infrastructure, a lot of different approaches. And the question is, which ones are actually best suited for each regional, for each location? And that's quite a complex system and needs quite a nuanced approach to solve. And this is where we come into, and we analyze a lot of different options and provide the software to analyze a lot of different options to then find the most efficient and effective way for each location and back that up with data. So how does this look like? Basically, we start from a building level. We do building analysis, for example, here for refurbishment of buildings, quite detailed, or for PV systems uh, on a building level, all the way to entire cities and regions. So you can see a screenshot of our digital twin, where we create digital twins of cities and regions to analyze the energy system and yeah, help decision makers find the best suited infrastructure. Let's have a look at this planning process, this digital planning process and its components. Essentially, it's four steps. So number one is the inventory analysis. We need to know where do we stand today? What is our energy infrastructure today? Number two is the potential analysis. So we need to know what are actually our locally available potentials? What is our energy source that we could use for a climate neutral future in a city? Number three is putting this together. So we know where we stand, we know what potentials we have, and now we can create scenarios to see how can a climate neutral future look like. And once we have these scenarios, the question is how to get there. So what steps, what actions, what measures need to be taken, what investments need to be done to reach this point? Let's dig a little bit deeper into these four different steps. So the inventory analysis, the goal is to record the status quo. Where do we stand today? What buildings do we have in a city? How old are they? What sector do they belong to? What energy carrier do they use? Where are energy production, energy generation systems? And we do this by acquiring a lot of data. So you've heard it before already. Um, yeah, there's a gazillion different data sources and the challenge here is to put everything together, use open data, geo data, and also earth observation data client data, consumption data, plausibilize this data, merge it together to detect the status quo. Once we know the status quo, we have to know what are our locally available potentials. So where do we have geospatially heat generation potentials, electricity generation potentials? So what are potentials for wind power plants, PV power plants, hydropower, district heating networks, and also very important, refurbishment potentials, because every energy that we don't use, we don't have to generate. So now we know the status quo, we know our locally available potentials, so the next goal is to develop those target scenarios. Depending on different pathways, different scenarios can be thinkable. So do we need to refurbish the electricity grid if we have an all-electric scenario, for example? Do we need to refurbish gas grids to be 
able to use hydrogen in certain aspects. So here the challenge is to build different scenarios, or the goal is to build different scenarios to see what different pathways can be taken for a climate neutral city in the future. And once we have all these scenarios, the question is which one's actually the most suited for each location, for each geospatial city, for each um, client. And this is the assessment of infrastructure. So we do basic economic analysis, we compare different options to see which infrastructure investments need to be taken in the future. And to have basically to back this up with data. So a little bit of summary again of this digital energy planning process, these four two phases, so the inventory analysis and the potential analysis, they're the planning foundation. And here we can really leverage earth observation data because it's globally available to then do this process basically globally and worldwide. And they lay the foundation for the designing of future energy systems, which are the third and the fourth phase of this digital energy planning process. One example on how we actually, or a couple examples, how we use this uh, Earth observation data. So we also, uh, as speaker before, we also have a project together with the European Space Agency. It's called EPOS, Energy Planning from Out of Space. And the goal is to re really use Earth observation data to be able to scale this process globally and worldwide. Big benefit of Earth observation data. It's available globally. It has quite a good temporal resolution, quite a good spatial resolution. Uh, and it, um, yeah, it allows us to, to use this process in many, many different cities. So a little bit of a system chart. How does this structure look like? Um, does this work? No. Um, basically, first step, data. Data acquisition. I've mentioned it earlier. We take a lot of different data sources, merge them together, and feed them into our energy planning models. So those models can be really um, yeah, extended by using Earth observation data to de then record the status quo and the potentials. Um, and this can then the end be used for planning and for access. So we give our clients access via REST RP or Web UI, um, if they use the digital twin as an example. What data sources do we actually use? So kind of feed in uh, many different Earth observation data sources. So uh, DEMS digital elevation models, climate and weather data, a uh, high resolution image, uh, a satellite imagery, for example, to name a few. Um, and now let's look at one example, which would be roof detection and PV detection, how this actually looks like. Um, so here, image recognition for energy, we call it. Um, what's the benefit of using satellite data here? Quite straightforward. We can record the status quo and local potentials better, because with high quality satellite imagery, we can detect where um, existing PV infrastructure is to then um, assess the status quo better, essentially. And same goes for roofs. So also using satellite imagery, we can detect individual and partial roofs. Usually we would use 3D models of buildings, but this is not always available or usually not available. So using high sat satellite imagery, we can detect the exact shape of roofs much better to then assess how to place PV plants on roofs better and assess the status quo better, uh, the potentials better. So in conclusion, for us, Earth observation data, data is very relevant in the energy planning process. It allows, it allows us to go globally, essentially, and have worldwide coverage. Um, it's quite competitive in, in a lot of different areas. It's uh, cost effective compared to many other options. And currently, we're in the process of further researching it and seeing where we can exactly use it to fit our and our clients' needs best. So we're always looking forward to uh, some partners that want to explore this together with us, uh, research partners or pilot customers. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs>